became interested in neuroscience because I wanted to understand more about why we do what we do. And I thought that by studying processes that were fundamental for survival, that might be a concrete place to start to understand some uh, general principles that would explain uh, our motivations. We focus mostly on neurons that sense starvation, neurons that are activated by starvation signals. We'd shown several years ago that one of these populations called AGRP neurons, that when we externally activated them using an optogenetic approach, it would take an animal that was otherwise well-fed and would have no interest in food and make it behave as if it was starving. And the animal would eat as much as an animal that had been starved for 24 hours. So we uh, were quite fascinated to understand that process. What we had expected was based on sort of the predominant view at the time is that these neurons would be uh, increasing the reward value of food or cues previously associated with food. There was an older idea, it was actually the dominant theory of the first half of the 20th century, which was that animals would eat because they had a, an unpleasant internal feeling that would be eliminated by eating. And that really simply came from introspection. I mean, I think we all know that being hungry or being thirsty doesn't feel particularly good. A postdoc in the lab, Nick Betley, started off by uh, performing what's called a conditioned flavor preference test. He did an experiment where he took two flavored gels. The mouse had a chance to eat them. He measured their preference for the gels. And then he paired one of the gels with photostimulation of the AGRP neurons while the animal was eating it. And the other gel, uh, it just got to eat it without activation of those AGRP neurons. And then after a few rounds of conditioning, he tested the animal's uh, preference for those two flavors. And what really surprised us is the animal showed a really striking reduction in preference for the flavor that it ate when these neurons were stimulated. That was completely opposite of what we expected and what the last 50 years of uh, neuroscience research in this area would have uh, predicted, which was that the, the manipulation that made the animal behave as if it was hungry also made it prefer less the flavor it ate under that condition, and that suggested these neurons might transmit a signal with negative valence. We were pretty cautious and uncertain about this. We did another experiment, which was maybe a little bit more naturalistic. We took an animal that was now food deprived, which activates these neurons, and the animal was hungry. Then we silenced these neurons while we performed the same flavor preference test, and it turned out that the flavor consumed when these neurons were silenced became preferred, exactly the sort of converse experiment. And so that seemed very convincing uh, in terms of uh, behavioral manipulations that perhaps these neurons really did transmit a signal with negative valence. What we really uh, were desperate to find out is what the natural activity patterns were of these neurons because those patterns uh, would, uh, would give us a good indication of whether or not there was, there was sort of real support for these neuronal perturbations that we had done. And around that time that we had these core results, uh, Enscopix and Vista system was available, we transduced those AGRP neurons with a virus that would deliver uh, GCAM6. Uh, a postdoc in the lab, uh, Shen Jinzhu, implanted a uh, long grin lens over this part of the brain called the arcuate nucleus, which is six millimeters down in the brain. It's a very hard place to get to, actually, because it's at the very base of the brain, and he found you know, s some sort of simple things that we had expected, like as the animal got more hungry, these neurons became brighter and started flashing. But really the key experiment is just to take the, the animal when those neurons are, are, are active, when the animal is hungry, and then he just gave them food. And what really blew us away is that as soon as the animal even saw food, the activity of the neurons was greatly reduced. And it wasn't just the activity of a few of the neurons. Nearly every neuron behaved the same way. 96% of the neurons reduced their activity when the animal just saw food. This observation showed us a relationship between metabolism and negative emotional states. Uh, it is likely uh, uh, related uh, to the feeling that people have when they go on a weight loss diet. We have these neurons uh, just as uh, mice do, and so it's, uh, it's likely a highly conserved system performing uh, very similar functions. 
And so these are the neurons that are going to increase their activity when uh, someone tries to lose 10 or 15 pounds. And this is going to be contributing to the feeling of, uh, that is sort of unpleasant about being in that uh, always slightly hungry uh, state. Uh, and so I think that uh, we need to understand uh, what is naturally controlling the activity of these neurons, all the receptors these neurons uh, express, for example, uh, in order to uh, uh, be able to try and reduce their activity uh, when people are on a weight loss diet, for example. <music>